Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Hotel Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn how to check in at the hotel, plus all the must-know hotel-related words and phrases. Download it for free right now. Second, our PDF Welcome Pack. New to the language and don't know where to start? Start with the basics. With our Welcome Pack, you get six PDF cheat sheets giving you a quick overview of the alphabet, grammar, keywords and phrases, and all the basics you must know. Third, going on vacation vocabulary. Learn how to say summer vacation, camping, honeymoon, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Fourth, how to talk about the muscles of the body. Learn how to say biceps, triceps, and much more. Fifth, idioms that make you sound like a native speaker. In this quick lesson, you'll pick up 10 idioms that you can use in conversations. Sixth, tired of apps that just teach you random words? With our innovative language learning app, you learn through conversations and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download it for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to learn the language in six months with our complete language learning program, then get up to 45% off all six month plans with our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Xin chào các bạn, mình là Linh đây. Rất vui được gặp lại các bạn. Hi guys, it's Linh again. Welcome back to VietnamesePod101.com, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. In this video today, we're going to talk about grammar. But trust me, it's not too difficult because we just learn about some grammar terms or like some words, uh, some kinds of words. Các thuật ngữ trong ngữ pháp Grammar terms so basically, I want to introduce to you some um, some overview about Vietnamese grammar. We have a sentence, Phong ba bão táp không bằng ngữ pháp Việt Nam. That means uh, even storms are not as hard as Vietnamese grammar. So uh, today I want to introduce to you some different kinds of words and uh, some terms in grammar so that you have some idea about uh, how Vietnamese grammar works. Okay, so let's get started. Danh từ Noun. Danh từ. Danh từ. Danh từ. Danh từ is a noun. Noun, easy, right? So we have like a lot, like a uh, bàn. Cái bàn is a table. Or ghế. Cái ghế is a chair. Or uh, cái giường. Cái giường. A bed. Or con người. Con người. People. Or human being. Uh, also, we have like plenty of nouns, uh, rất nhiều danh từ, danh từ uh, bầu trời, bầu trời, the sky, or uh, căn phòng, căn phòng, the room, okay, so danh từ, noun. Động từ, verb. Động từ, động từ, động từ, động từ is a verb, động từ easy right động từ so từ here is the word okay danh từ động từ từ is the word động từ is the verb um, let's see for example làm việc làm việc làm việc to work um, đi bộ đi bộ to walk chạy 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 to run ngủ 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 okay so a lot of động từ rất nhiều động từ tính từ adjective tính từ tính từ tính từ is an adjective tính từ another từ danh từ động từ tính từ tính từ to to is big and nhỏ Nhỏ, it's small, right? For example, uh, what else? Cao, cao means tall, and thấp, thấp có nghĩa là um, short or low, thấp. Số từ, numbers. Số từ, số từ, số từ, uh, số có nghĩa là 
number and từ có nghĩa là word số từ means like words of numbers so uh, it can be numbers and it can be ordinal numbers as well ví dụ một hai ba bốn means like um, one two three four right số từ so uh, those are numbers and also thứ nhất thứ hai thứ ba thứ tư uh, có nghĩa là ordinal numbers the first the second the third and the fourth thứ nhất thứ hai thứ ba thứ tư I remember that we have one video about numbers and ordinal numbers already. So let's check it out. Lượng từ Lượng từ Lượng từ Lượng từ means uh, words that indicate uh, the amount of something. Lượng từ Lượng means amount. Từ means word. Lượng từ Ví dụ, tất cả Tất cả Có nghĩa là all Um, một vài một vài một vài um, có nghĩa là a few or some mấy 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 có nghĩa là a few to uh, một vài mấy uh, vài there are um, similar they are like the same uh, we can use for some or a few and in Vietnamese we don't have singular or plural nouns Phó từ Supporting words Phó từ Phó từ Phó từ uh, Phó here means like a uh, vice or um, It's like in vice president or vice director or uh, deputy So phó từ here means like words that um, go with adjectives or um, verbs to support the words um, so For example đã, đang, sẽ to indicate the past, the present, and the future, right? đã, đang, sẽ so they are phó từ also for example like không, chẳng không, chẳng means no for example không được, không được means uh, no or uh, chẳng có gì chẳng có gì means nothing or never mind chẳng có gì so không and chẳng à phó từ đại từ pronoun đại từ đại từ đại từ is very similar to English which is pronoun đại từ à uh, so we have a uh, tôi bạn anh ấy cô ấy họ Uh, I, you, or me, you, her, or him, or them. So, đại từ, pronoun. Chỉ từ. Chỉ từ. Chỉ từ. Chỉ means uh, to point or to indicate. So, chỉ từ means words that indicate the positions of something in space or time. For example, này. Này. Này means like here or this uh, Or uh, đó Đó means that Or over there Đó Nọ Nọ Means uh, that or like uh, that time or that day For example Ngày nọ means like that day Ngày nọ Quan hệ từ Linking words Quan hệ từ Quan hệ từ quan hệ từ quan hệ từ uh, có nghĩa là linking words uh, ví dụ uh, bởi vì bởi vì bởi vì because nên nên like so like just because something so so we can use bởi vì nên bởi vì nên tuy nhiên tuy nhiên means like uh, however or you can use uh, nhưng nhưng means but so all of them all of the linking words are quan hệ từ trợ từ supporting word trợ từ trợ từ trợ từ trợ từ is like supporting words for example like những or mỗi so it's very different and uh, it's very um, difficult to use okay for example ăn những hai bát cơm ăn những Hai bát cơm means like uh, to eat two bowls of rice 
but when we put new here means like ah oh, that's a little bit a lot that's a little bit too much so ăn những hai bát cơm but when we say ăn mỗi hai bát cơm ăn mỗi hai bát cơm ăn mỗi hai bát cơm means like you only eat two bowls of rice so uh, that depends on the filling depends on the expressions that you want to show uh, we can use different words to support your idea or to support your feeling, support your expression. So we use um, chợ từ, chợ từ, some supporting words like that. Thán từ, exclamation. Thán từ, thán từ, thán từ, uh, có nghĩa là exclamation. Thán từ, words that are used to express your feeling. Or, uh, for example, oh my god, that is an exclamation, right? So, in Vietnamese, we have thán từ. Ví dụ, ôi trời, ôi trời ơi, ôi trời ơi, means oh my god, ôi trời ơi, ôi trời ơi, something like that. Go đơn, simple sentence. All right, so now let's talk about sentence parts. For example, in English, we have like simple sentences, or um, complex sentences so in Vietnamese we also have the same however it's so 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 complicated and it's really really hard for foreigners to make like a full complex sentence because uh, because of the roles of different words and also like the positions of the words in the sentence so um, let me share with you something for example uh, the simple sentence in Vietnamese we say go đơn go đơn Go đơn, go đơn, đơn is like single, and um, single or, or, or simple. Go đơn is simply a sentence with a subject and a predicate. For example, tôi làm việc, tôi làm việc, tôi làm việc, tôi is I, làm việc is work, tôi is a subject, right? And làm việc is a verb, but it's also a predicate. Tôi làm việc is a simple sentence or a single sentence. However, we also have like complex sentences. Go phức. Go phức. Complex sentence. Go phức. Go phức. Go phức means like a complicated sentence, which is very complicated. For example, let me give you an example, like a very long sentence. Năm ngoái, cô ấy nhận được một công việc mới nên đã chuyển vào miền Nam để sinh sống và làm việc. Let me make it faster. Năm ngoái cô ấy nhận được một công việc mới nên đã chuyển vào miền Nam để sinh sống và làm việc. So, năm ngoái here means like last year. Cô ấy nhận được một công việc mới like she got offered a new job. Nên means like so. Uh, therefore, nên đã chuyển vào miền Nam đã chuyển vào miền Nam. So here you don't see the subject anymore, right? We don't say nên cô ấy đã chuyển. No, we can leave that word. So nên đã chuyển vào miền Nam. So she moved to the south để sinh sống và làm việc to live and work, or for living and working để sinh sống và làm việc. So this is like a sentence with different parts uh, which support each other and um, uh, here we use nên which is a linking word quan hệ từ to connect two parts of the sentence and we don't have to use like the same subject uh, so it will be năm ngoái cô ấy nhận được một công việc mới nên đã chuyển vào miền Nam để sinh sống và làm việc all right that's it for today um, to be honest you don't have to remember the name of the grammar points or the name of the words. But I want to tell you so that you will know that sometimes in Vietnamese, there will be something similar. And sometimes we call differently. But actually, they play like almost the similar role in the sentence to support the main idea or to support the subject or the structure of the sentence. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it because not everybody enjoys grammar, right? But thank you so much for watching. And if you want to study Vietnamese in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way, 
Go to VietnamesePod11.com to get your free lifetime account right now. Get your real lessons by real teachers. And like video is here, subscribe is here. Please like and subscribe. And I see you in the next video. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn. Tóc đuôi ngựa. Đuôi is the tail. Xin chào các bạn. Linh đây, Linh đây, Linh đây. Xin chào các bạn. Rất vui được gặp lại các bạn. Hi everyone, it's Ling and welcome back. Uh, in this video today, we're going to talk about hair and hairstyle vocabulary. So, uh, there will be plenty of words, there will be plenty of hairstyles, of course, and I'm going to introduce to you some related, some relevant words as well. So, let's see what we got. Now, let's talk about hairstyles first. We have tóc. Tóc means hair. Tóc. Dấu sắc. Tóc, okay. So we have tóc ngắn. Tóc ngắn. Tóc ngắn means uh, short hair. And tóc dài. Tóc dài. Dài. Tóc dài means long hair. Tóc ngắn. Tóc dài. Okay. Tóc ngắn. Tóc dài. Tóc xoan. Tóc xoan. Tóc xoan. Tóc xoan. Tóc xoan means curly hair and tóc thẳng. Tóc thẳng. Tóc thẳng. Tóc thẳng means uh, straight hair. Tóc thẳng. Tóc đuôi ngựa. Tóc đuôi ngựa. Tóc đuôi ngựa. Tóc đuôi ngựa means ponytail. Tóc đuôi ngựa. Đuôi is the tail, ngựa is the horse. Tóc đuôi ngựa, ponytail. We also have tóc bốp. Tóc bốp. Bốp means like bob haircut. Uh, means it's very very short. Like Victoria Beckham like long time ago when she has a very famous bob hairstyle. Tóc bốp. Tóc bốp. Tóc búi. Búi. Can you guess what it is? Tóc búi. Tóc búi. Tóc búi means hair bun. Tóc búi. And um, do you know the very famous messy bun? Tóc búi dối. Tóc búi dối. Tóc búi dối means messy bun. Tóc búi dối. Also, we have tóc búi trễ. Like up to here. Tóc búi trễ. Búi trễ means a uh, low bun. Tóc búi trễ. How about high bun? Uh, tóc búi cao. Tóc búi cao. Tóc búi cao, ok? Um, low bun, high bun, tóc búi trễ, tóc búi cao Tóc búi, tóc búi trễ, tóc búi cao Tóc tết Tóc tết Can you guess? Tóc tết means bread Tóc tết, tóc vàng Tóc vàng Tóc vàng means blonde uh, Vàng actually means yellow so like the hair with yellow color but we don't say like yellow hair right so tóc vàng tóc vàng tóc vàng um brown color is tóc nâu tóc nâu or we also have a uh, chocolate color um which is very famous in vietnam tóc màu sô cô la sô cô la sô cô la is chocolate tóc màu sô cô la Tóc bạc. <laughs> tóc bạc Tóc bạc means gray hair We used to say tóc trắng means white hair But it's a bit uh, unnatural So usually we say tóc bạc, gray hair Tóc gợn sóng Tóc gợn sóng Like this Tóc gợn sóng is like not too curly But it's like wavy, wavy hair Tóc gợn sóng Like a little bit wavy Like very romantic, very natural Tóc gợn sóng And a lot of Vietnamese women like it Tóc gợn sóng To curl your hair We use uốn tóc Uốn tóc Uốn tóc Not uống, ok Uốn Uốn nở Uốn tóc Uốn tóc means to curl um, Duỗi tóc Duỗi tóc Duỗi Dấu ngã, duỗi tóc Có nghĩa là to make it straight or flat To straighten your hair Duỗi tóc Duỗi tóc 
we also have a uh, hoi, 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 hoi means bald. Of course, hoi means no hair, right? So we don't use, we don't say tóc hoi, no. Hoi, just hoi is fine. Hoi, dấu sắc. Uh, the opposite is tóc dày, tóc dày, tóc dày means uh, thick hair. Tóc dày, okay? And the opposite to thick is thin, right? Tóc mỏng. Tóc mỏng. Tóc mỏng. Dầu hỏi. Tóc mỏng. Tóc dày. Tóc mỏng. Tóc dày. Tóc mỏng. Chọc. Chọc. Chọc means skin head. Chọc. Or you can say đầu chọc. Đầu chọc means skin head. Chọc or no chop like no hair at all uh, also we have like when your hair is short and you want to have some hair extension so in Vietnamese we say tóc nối tóc nối tóc nối tóc nối hair extension or to like to extend your hair tóc nối uh, so the opposite nối tóc means to extend your hair or to make it longer nối tóc Nối tóc, okay? So, nối here is the verb and tóc is the noun. However, when you use tóc nối, so nối here is also an adjective. Tóc mái, like this. So, some very small and short hair. Tóc mái, like the hair bang. Tóc mái, tóc mái. Alright, we have tóc hư tổn. Tóc hư tổn. Tóc hư tổn means uh, damaged hair. Tóc hư tổn. Hư tổn is like broken or um, extremely damaged. Tóc hư tổn. Now let's talk about some other uh, relevant words or verbs. For example, you want to say to wash your hair, to wash. Uh, we say gội đầu, gội đầu, gội đầu, to wash your hair, gội đầu. That means like to wash your head, gội đầu, because đầu is a head, gội đầu. Tiệm làm tóc. Tiệm làm tóc Tiệm làm tóc Tiệm làm tóc is a hair salon Tiệm làm tóc Tiệm is like a shop or like a salon or like a place where you go Tiệm làm tóc uh, It can be a boutique as well Tiệm làm tóc So the hair stylist would be Thợ làm tóc Thợ làm tóc Thợ làm tóc hair stylist Tông đơ Tông đơ Tông đơ Tông đơ Clipper Or um, can we say trimmer Like the machine to cut your hair Tông đơ Clipper Tông đơ Comb Lược 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 Ok Lược dấu nặng Lược Nhuộm tóc Nhuộm tóc Nhuộm tóc Nhuộm tóc means to dye your hair Nhuộm tóc or to change the color, right? To dye, to change the color Nhuộm tóc Sấy tóc Sấy tóc Sấy tóc To dry something, to dry your hair uh, Sấy tóc And máy sấy tóc is the hair dryer Máy sấy tóc Máy sấy tóc Máy sấy tóc, ok Cắt tóc Cắt tóc Cắt tóc means uh, to cut your hair or to get your hair cut Cắt tóc Cắt tóc uh, The hair spray is uh, keo xịt tóc Keo xịt tóc Keo xịt tóc Keo xịt tóc also, we will have some products like shampoo or uh, hair conditioner. Uh, shampoo is dầu gội đầu. Dầu gội đầu. Dầu gội đầu. Dầu gội đầu. Okay. And uh, the hair conditioner is dầu xà. Dầu xà. Dầu xà. Dầu here means oil, but like when going together dầu gội dầu xà 
dầu gội, dầu giả. Mặt nạ cho tóc. Mặt nạ is a mask. Cho tóc means like for hair. Mặt nạ cho tóc, hair mask. Mặt nạ cho tóc. Uh, we also can use like face mask. So we use just mặt nạ in general. Mặt nạ only uh, means like um, the face mask. Mặt nạ cho tóc is hair uh, hair mask. Mặt nạ cho tóc. Dầu dưỡng ẩm. Dầu dưỡng ẩm. Dầu dưỡng ẩm means uh, moisturizing conditioner. Dầu dưỡng ẩm. Ẩm means humid or like moisturizing. Ẩm. Uh, dầu dưỡng ẩm. Moisturizing conditioner. Dầu dưỡng ẩm. So if you want to say like to protect your hair, we can say bảo vệ tóc. Bảo vệ tóc. For example, like um, using hair sunscreen to protect your hair. Um, dùng kem chống nắng cho tóc để bảo vệ tóc. Bảo vệ tóc. Okay. Dùng kem chống nắng cho tóc để bảo vệ tóc. Alright, so we have xoăn giả. Xoăn giả. Xoăn giả means like to curl your hair with um, the curling machine. So it's like we don't use chemical to curl your hair. But when we say xoăn thật, xoăn thật, xoăn thật, that means you curl your hair with chemicals. Uh, xoăn here is curl or curly, okay? And giả is like fake. Thật is like real or authentic. Xoăn giả, xoăn thật is like they are different, okay? Xoăn giả, xoăn thật. All right, that's it for today. A lot of words to remember, right? And I hope it's gonna be helpful for you. So um, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe the channel, and if you want to learn Vietnamese in the fastest, easiest, and most fun way, go to VietnamesePod101.com for your free lifetime account right now and get your real lessons by real teachers. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Xin chào hẹn gặp lại các bạn. Xin chào các bạn, mình là Linh đây. Rất vui được gặp lại các bạn. Nào, các bạn có khỏe không? Welcome back to VietnamesePod101.com The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Vietnamese. Do you like money? So let's talk about money today. I'm going to introduce to you some money-related expressions that can be used for daily conversations. And I hope it's going to be helpful. And so let's get started. So in general, there will be a lot of vocabulary, but I'm going to introduce to you in sentences so that you know how to make sentences and how you really use the language, how you how you really produce a language, okay? So we have money in Vietnamese is tiền, 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 but we have like plenty of words and terms related to uh, money. So um, the number one would be tôi vừa mới lĩnh lương tôi vừa mới lĩnh lương tôi vừa mới lĩnh lương means like I've got my paycheck tôi vừa mới lĩnh lương so lương here is a salary or paycheck but usually lương means a salary okay tôi vừa mới lĩnh lương okay so I've just got my paycheck Tháng này tôi có tiền thưởng. Tháng này tôi có tiền thưởng. Tháng này tôi có tiền thưởng. Tiền thưởng means bonus. Tiền thưởng. Uh, tháng này tôi có tiền thưởng means uh, I got a bonus this month. Tháng này tôi có tiền thưởng. So we got tiền lương, salary, tiền thưởng, bonus. Um, so if you want to say like someone is rich and someone is poor, uh, we have giàu, nghèo in Vietnamese. Giàu for rich and nghèo for poor. For example, in sentence, cô ấy giàu còn tôi nghèo. Cô ấy giàu còn tôi nghèo. Cô ấy giàu còn tôi nghèo. She's rich and I'm poor. Cô ấy giàu còn tôi nghèo. Tiền mặt Tiền mặt Alright, in, in, in sentence uh, Bạn có tiền mặt không? Bạn có tiền mặt không?
không? Bạn có tiền mặt không means like do you have any cash or uh, if you want to say like do you want to pay by cash or by credit cards, you can say bạn muốn thanh toán bằng tiền mặt hay bằng thẻ. Bạn muốn thanh toán bằng tiền mặt hay bằng thẻ. Bạn muốn thanh toán bằng tiền mặt hay bằng thẻ? You want to pay by cash or credit cards? Bạn muốn thanh toán bằng tiền mặt hay bằng thẻ? Uh, so if you want to say like money exchange, we can say đổi tiền. Đổi tiền. Đổi is to exchange and tiền is money. Uh, and in sentence, uh, tôi có thể đổi tiền ở đâu? Tôi có thể đổi tiền ở đâu? Tôi có thể đổi tiền ở đâu? Very common, right? Where can I exchange money? Tôi có thể đổi tiền ở đâu? If you want to say like you want to treat someone dinner or you want to uh, buy someone dinner in Vietnamese, we say khao, 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 khao means like treat, to treat someone something, right? Also, we have another word, bao, 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 bao is more casual, okay? It's like for friends. In sentence, hôm nay tớ bao, hôm nay tớ bao, hôm nay tớ bao, tớ here means I, but in a casual way, it's like for friends, so we say tớ instead of tôi, tôi is very formal, hôm nay tớ bao means like meals on me today, or it's my treat today, hôm nay tớ bao, okay, but also you can use hôm nay tớ khao, hôm nay tớ khao, okay, so bao and khao. All right, so if you want to share the bill, we can say share, but in Vietnamese accent, say, uh, no, not really share, share, because I usually say like share, uh, share, say, share, share, yeah, share, share. So um, also we can say um, chia, chia, chia means like to split the bill or to share the bill. Uh, for example, uh, share nha, share nha means like share is it okay or what about share share nhớ okay share nhớ all right share um can i share something like that uh, so if you want to say like you own someone money uh we say no 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 Okay, no can be used as a verb, but at the same time as a noun. Uh, for example, as a verb, we can say Tôi nợ bạn bao nhiêu? Tôi nợ bạn bao nhiêu? Bao nhiêu means how much. Tôi nợ bạn bao nhiêu is like how much do I owe you? Tôi nợ bạn bao nhiêu? But there will be a situation where no can be used as a noun. For example, like you're in debt. Right, so you can say tôi đang nợ, tôi đang nợ, tôi đang nợ. I'm in debt, uh, or like bạn đang nợ, like you're in debt. If you want to say like to save money, we say tiết kiệm, tiết kiệm. So tiết kiệm will be the verb, right? Will be a verb. But if you want to say like savings. Uh, as a noun, we say khoản tiết kiệm, khoản tiết kiệm. So that would be a noun. For example, ví dụ, um, tôi cần phải tiết kiệm hơn. Tôi cần phải tiết kiệm hơn. Um, that means I need to save more. Tôi cần phải tiết kiệm hơn. But if you want to say it like I have some savings or I have uh, savings, uh, you can say tôi có một khoản tiết kiệm. Tôi có một khoản tiết kiệm. Okay, so when you use khoản before uh, the amount of money, like some kind of amount of money, that'll be a noun. Uh, I will give you like another example later, okay? okay? 
So if you want to say like um, to invest in something in Vietnamese, we say đầu tư. Đầu tư. Đầu tư means to invest. And again, if you want to use like an investment um, as a noun, right? So we say khoản đầu tư. Khoản đầu tư. All right, ví dụ, tôi muốn đầu tư vào chứng khoán. Tôi muốn đầu tư vào chứng khoán. That means I want to invest in stocks. Tôi muốn đầu tư vào chứng khoán. Chứng khoán is stocks. Um, but if you want to say like tôi có một khoản đầu tư ở bất động sản. Tôi có một khoản đầu tư ở bất động sản. That means like I have an investment in real estate. Tôi có một khoản đầu tư ở bất động sản. Uh, so if you borrow money from the bank, that means you have a loan, right? And in Vietnamese, we say khoản vay. Khoản vay. Khoản vay means a loan. And um, in sentence, tôi có một khoản vay. Tôi có một khoản vay. I have a loan. Tôi có một khoản vay. Vay. Tôi có một khoản vay. To lend some money, uh, for example, like she lent me some money. We say, cô ấy cho tôi vay tiền. Cô ấy cho tôi vay tiền. So vay here is a verb to lend. Uh, cô ấy cho tôi vay tiền. Cho vay means uh, to lend uh, money, but cho tôi vay so tôi here will be like the object an object right so cô ấy is a subject cho vay uh, is the verb lend cho tôi vay so the object will be in the middle of cho and vay cô ấy cho tôi vay tiền she lent me money so let's say you make money so not only your salary but like the total income we say Thu nhập, thu nhập, thu nhập. Uh, ví dụ, cô ấy có thu nhập rất tốt. Cô ấy có thu nhập rất tốt. Cô ấy có thu nhập rất tốt means uh, she has a really good income. Cô ấy có thu nhập rất tốt. So not only from salary but like the total amount of money you make a month. Cô ấy có thu nhập rất tốt. Um, another example would be người nước ngoài có thu nhập tốt hơn người Việt Nam. Người nước ngoài có thu nhập tốt hơn người Việt Nam. Người nước ngoài có thu nhập tốt hơn người Việt Nam means like foreigners have better income than Vietnamese people. Người nước ngoài có thu nhập tốt hơn người Việt Nam. All right, so in case you're completely broke, you're like penniless, you can say Tôi đang nghèo kết sát Tôi đang nghèo kết sát Tôi đang nghèo kết sát Okay, so this is like a very casual word. Uh, it's informal, very, very casual. Tôi đang nghèo kết sát Like I'm completely broke. Okay, last one I want to finish by a very um, interesting sentence. Um, cái gì không mua được bằng tiền có thể mua bằng rất nhiều tiền cái gì không mua được bằng tiền có thể mua bằng rất nhiều tiền cái gì không mua được bằng tiền có thể mua bằng rất nhiều tiền means like what can't be bought by money can be bought by a lot of money um, which is pretty true so <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, so depends. All right, that's it for today. Uh, everything that I could think of um, that is relevant to money or like finance. So I hope it helps. And um, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe the channel, visit the website VietnamesePort101.com to get access to your free lifetime account right now and to get your real lessons by real teachers. Um, thank you so much again. And xin chào và hẹn gặp lại. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning.
where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of a teacher. Are you learning a language alone or with someone else, like a teacher? If you're learning alone, then you're missing out on some powerful benefits and not just being able to practice with someone. A good teacher can motivate you to go above and beyond your current level right now. And that's why today you'll discover, one, the powerful benefits of learning with a good teacher, and two, how you can learn faster with outside help. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Hotel Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn how to check in at the hotel, plus all the must-know hotel-related words and phrases. Download it for free right now. Second, our PDF Welcome Pack. New to the language and don't know where to start? Start with the basics. And with our welcome pack, you get six PDF cheat sheets giving you a quick overview of the alphabet, grammar, keywords and phrases, and all the basics you must know. Third, going on vacation vocabulary. Learn how to say summer vacation, camping, honeymoon, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Fourth, how to talk about the muscles of the body. Learn how to say biceps, triceps, and much more. Fifth, Idioms that make you sound like a native speaker. In this quick lesson, you'll pick up 10 idioms that you can use in conversations. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The power of a teacher. Part one, the benefits of learning with a good teacher. Have you ever had a good teacher that inspired you to do better and go above and beyond? It could be any teacher, and not just language related. If you had someone like that, then you already know the power of a really good teacher and the impact it can have on your learning. If you had the opposite, then you're also well aware of how a bad teacher can toss cold water on your motivation and desire to learn. But today, we just want to focus on the good and powerful benefits of learning with a teacher. One. You get language practice and feedback. For the most part, any teacher can give you new words and grammar rules, help you practice and correct your mistakes. And that's the most obvious benefit. Next. Two, if you enjoy learning with your teacher, you'll want to improve more. Now, this is one of the rarely talked about benefits. But if you think about it, if you actually enjoy learning with your teacher, and if your teacher takes the time to understand where you're struggling, something interesting will happen to your progress. Because you feel like someone finally understands you, you'll open up and want to learn and practice more. You'll want to impress them, and you'll come to the next lesson better than before. And if you add all of that effort up, lesson after lesson, you'll improve much faster. So that's why it's important to find a teacher that fits your needs well. On the other hand, if you don't really care who you learn with, and if you just show up, listen, take notes, and repeat a few words, you won't learn as fast. It'll be no different than going to class in school, passing a test, and forgetting everything immediately after. Three, higher expectations create better results. If your teacher sets high expectations, and if you can handle it, you'll progress much faster than with a more easygoing teacher. For example, if one teacher wants you to learn 500 words in a month and another just wants 100, even if you fail the 500 word goal, you'll still be much further along than with someone that doesn't put pressure on you. But of course, that's a personal decision. Some people want someone to push them, and some people want to learn the language at a comfortable pace. If you're upfront with your expectations, a good teacher will understand the pace you want and will work with that. By the way, if you have a good teacher that you remember from school, leave a comment below and let us know how they helped you succeed. Now, where can you get someone as motivational as that to help you learn a language fast? Well, it's easier said than done, but let's get into it. Part two, how you can learn faster with outside help. Having outside support can be a game changer for your long-term motivation. It can push you to reach new limits and work harder than ever. And that outside support can be a teacher, like we mentioned, a tutor, family, a friend, or someone you look up to. 
but it has to be someone that inspires and energizes you. And finding people like that is easier said than done. So if you're looking for outside support, there are a few things you can do. First, find yourself a teacher. But again, really good teachers, the kind that motivate and push you, are hard to find. So you might want to take a few trial lessons with a few teachers to find the one you're the best fit with. Second, if you know your learning style and what methods work for you, be sure to let your teacher know directly. It's their job to help, but they won't know you as well as you know yourself. But if you passively go into every session without having questions and requests of your own, you won't progress as fast. Third, if you're learning with our system and are a Premium Plus user, take advantage of your Premium Plus teacher. They'll hold you accountable, send you assignments, and give you feedback to help you perfect your language skills. Fourth, if you're learning with our system but are just taking the lessons, then find a lesson host you like in our lessons. Oftentimes, our users stick with lessons and continue learning just because they like the lesson host. And fifth, find other language learners that match or exceed your motivation level. Why? Because seeing someone else succeed and improve will push you to do the same. And this is a good option if you don't have immediate access to a teacher as well. Now, back to you. Are you learning with a teacher right now? Have you ever had a teacher that motivated you to do better? Leave a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about how to create long lasting habits for language learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You want to speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step by step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to learn your target language fast and understand native conversations, even if you're a beginner? In this learning strategies video, you'll learn all about the line-by-line -line dialogue, a powerful study tool that, one, makes understanding conversations a breeze for beginners, and two, improves your speaking, listening, reading, and even writing skills. 
But first, if you don't yet have access to this tool and our lessons, just click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. One, what is the line-by-line -line dialog exactly? The line-by-line -line dialog is a study tool that makes absorbing conversations easier. And you'll find it in all of our audio lessons inside of our learning program. It breaks down the conversations you learn in our lessons into individual lines so that you don't get overwhelmed. For each line, you get the text in the target language, the translations, and audio pronunciation. So you can listen to each line, read along, and understand every single word. And you can also use the line-by-line -line dialogue to perfect your speaking, reading, listening, and writing skills. How? Take a look. Two, how to improve your speaking skills. The easiest way to start speaking on your own is to shadow what you hear, meaning repeat what you hear as you play each line. Just press the audio icon next to each line to hear it and shadow along. Next, if you want to perfect your pronunciation, click on the microphone icon to start recording. Then record and compare your pronunciation with the native speakers. These tactics get you speaking in minutes, and if you apply these to every lesson, you'll be speaking a lot more of your target language. Next, here's how you master listening. Since the line-by-line -line dialogue is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, you can listen to each line separately, as much as you want. Click on the audio icon to listen again and again and review the script. Read along so that you can pick apart every word. That way, you can understand those fast, native-level conversations and never miss a word. Four, here's how you can practice reading. As you listen to the conversation, read along line by line. And if you don't know a word, click on the translations. They're right there in the line by line dialogue. You can even read with the Romanized script to help you sound out the words. And finally, here's how you can practice writing. Now, this advice is not something you'll hear very often because it's so simple. It's so simple that most people don't even think of doing it. Here it is. Just grab a pen and copy the lesson dialogue down into a notebook. The big benefit here is there's no writer's block. You don't have to worry about what to write. It's all there for you. So if you want to learn your target language faster, understand native level conversations, and improve your speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills, then get free access to the line by line dialogue. Sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.